Hi, it's The Wire. It's September the 12th, 2023. Keeping it free, .blogspot.com, a free site. Uh, also, Dwyer Private Equity, .blogspot.com, a free site. Let's talk about the JFK assassination, the recent revelation, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, the Warren Commission narrative continues to unravel. Paul Landis, now 88 years old, was a Secret Service agent who was standing on a running board a few feet from President Kennedy when our president was shot. Now, Paul Landis says that he found the bullet we would later call the magic bullet stuck in the limousine seat behind where President Kennedy was sitting. Right? His interview is in Vanity Fair magazine. Right? It is Paul Landis who put the bullet on Kennedy's stretcher. He did not want memorabilia seekers to take this important piece of history. So what he did, and he thought he was doing the right thing, was he took this bullet Right? Some call it the magic bullet. Some call it the pristine bullet. He took this bullet and he put it on President Kennedy's stretcher. Now, Landis believes that the bullet fell out of Kennedy's back. Simply put, folks, this changes everything. The first question who shot Governor Connolly, sitting right in front of John F. Kennedy? Right, the Warren Commission wanted you to believe that this magic bullet passed through Kennedy, came out his throat, goes into Connolly, hits Connolly in the ribs, shatters his wrist, Right? Creates all the injuries to Governor Connolly. Folks, we now have important eyewitness testimony that that did not happen. Let's ask a second question. The bullet has been called pristine is the reason because it simply fell out of JFK's back and did not go through his body, hit Connolly, and shatter Connolly's ribs and wrist. Understand Landis's account of what happened actually matches the physical condition of the bullet. Let's ask some more questions. Let's think this through. To figure out the scope of the conspiracy, ask yourself why the autopsy did not determine that the bullet fell out of JFK's back. Shouldn't the autopsy have traced the bullet If you question the autopsy, as I do, just ask yourself whether any part of that autopsy is authentic, right? You have a bullet that falls out of Kennedy's back, and yet the autopsy suggests otherwise. 
the autopsy gives rise to the later Warren Commission findings. Now finally, and perhaps most importantly, that alleged exit wound in Kennedy's throat, right? The one that they conveniently did a tracheotomy right over, right? The one that we're supposed to believe was caused by the first shot to hit Kennedy, supposedly leaves his throat, then hits Connolly in the seat in front of him. Isn't that Senator Arlen Specter's theory? Right, Specter, of course, was a researcher on the Warren Commission, later becomes a senator. Well, just understand that that alleged exit wound, we now know, is actually an entry wound, isn't it? If the magic bullet doesn't come through Kennedy's throat, if the magic bullet stays behind Kennedy, then something else hit Kennedy in the throat. Right? That's very important if you're thinking of the Zapruder film. Connolly would have been hit by a different gunman and Kennedy would have been hit at least once from the front. So I want people to think this through. I'm going to leave it there. There's a lot more that I could say here. But I want people to think it through. Let me also say this. There's a doctor who initially told the press that the shot was from the front that hit Kennedy's throat. Right? The throat wound is key, folks. We're supposed to believe that it's happenstance, that the tracheotomy is done right over the hole in Kennedy's throat. Now, I want people to look at the Landis account carefully. Clint Hill, who I've discussed in prior videos, is the Secret Service agent to Landis' right. Now understand, according to Clint Hill, when he gets to the president and he looks at the president, he knew the president was gone because the president's eyes were open and they were vacant. Right? Just understand, this is the early 60s. A lot of these Secret Service men had been in the military. Right? Some had been in combat. They knew what a gunshot sounded like. They understood that when someone is hit in the head and they aren't conscious and their eyes are open and the eyes are vacant, they understand that that person's gone. Well, just to understand, according to Landis, he looks over at Clint Hill he realized the president was gone himself just off the severity of the shooting. He looks over at Clint Hill, and Clint Hill, according to Landis, gives a thumbs down. Now, that's very important because the Secret Service men, not singular but plural, realized that the President of the United States was gone just moments after the President was shot. But yet we are to believe that when he gets to Parkland, he's still alive, right? We are to believe that because the President is still alive, they're doing a tracheotomy that's arguably the most controversial tracheotomy in history, right over a wound that we're still arguing about 60 years later. 
right? Well, just ask yourself, if the magic bullet stays behind Kennedy, which bullet caused this wound on President Kennedy? Because we understand a bullet almost hits James Taig. Look up that, right? We understand a bullet almost hits James Taig. We're supposed to believe that the lone gunman, Lee Harvey Oswald, fires three shots, right? We know one of them is over by James Taig. One's supposed to be the magic bullet, passing through Kennedy, hitting Connolly. The third shot is the fatal head shot. Right? My question to you is, if the magic bullet stayed behind Kennedy, what's the bullet that passes through Kennedy's throat? What's the bullet that had Gerald Ford on the Warren Commission, future president? Right? Think about how the Warren Commission was rewarded. Gerald Ford appointed vice president by Nixon. Right, of course, Nixon is talking to a CIA person on tape and says, I know who killed John, that Nixon. And of course, Arlen Specter becomes a senator. But just understand, Gerald Ford changes the trajectory of the bullet wound in Kennedy's back to make it align with the wound in his throat, right? Because it didn't match Kennedy's clothing, we're supposed to believe that the clothing was wrinkled and came up on Kennedy. That's how contorted the Warren Commission findings are. Now we're finding out that the bullet never passes through Kennedy. There's nothing to line up with the throat wound on Kennedy, at least not from supposedly Lee Harvey Oswald's misaligned rifle. So what's the bullet that passes through Kennedy's throat? Does it pass through Kennedy's throat? Or does it enter Kennedy's throat from the front? Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.